Hey everybody, Ben here from the Burnout Podcast and welcome to Blood Bowl Formations Nurgle Setups. We're having a look at setup formations for every team in Blood Bowl 2020. Whether it's from the rulebook, the Teams of Legend PDF or the NAF Expanded teams, we are coming up with some good ways to set up your team at the beginning of a kickoff. Whether you are kicking or receiving, we're going to talk through some of the positionals and some of the places you want to be putting them. So if you are running Nurgle or you're going to be playing against Nurgle, this video should give you some insight as to where people can go and why. So Nurgle are quite an interesting team. You've got slow linemen who are only edge 4 plus, movement 5, edge 4 plus. So not a lot of flexibility when it comes to uh, moving from one place to another. You've got the Beast of Nurgle, who is an absolute tank. Strength 5 comes with tentacles, really stupid, so has to be babysat. Then you've got four Nurgle Warriors. Now these guys are fantastic. Disturbing presence means that passing the ball around them is a problem. Foul appearance means that if your opponent wants to block them, they've got to roll a 2+. plus. I know it doesn't sound much, but that cheeky one is going to come up. It's going to cost them a re-roll or it's going to cost them their blitz. These are both very good things. Then you've got Pestigors, and Pestigors are just sneaky, fantastic players. They've got the foul appearance, they've got the regen, they've got the horns. These guys are beastmen on a bad health year okay they are wicked and they are subtly brilliant players so when it comes to playing nurgle on the defense you've got two kind of actions you can gum up the line gum up where your players are likely to um, be in a position to stop their players or you can wait and wait patiently so what we've got here for you first is the slow anchor defense this is a very flexible formation when it comes to Nurgle and this one here is going to be useful if you're playing against a team that is stronger or as strong as you. So if you're against Chaos, another Nurgle team, Blackhawks, Lizardmen, stuff like that, teams that are going to outbash you, you can disengage. Now you'll see that there's actually two squares here between your line detachment and your reserve. That's quite a long way. Why is that? These guys have only got four movement. These guys have only got four movement. So you need to have them a little bit further back to make sure that you've got the time to close the window on where your opponent's heading. Now, that is assuming that you are willing to just concede that line of scrimmage. The other advantage here is that you've got a beast right here and you've got linemen right here so if your opponent wants to tag any of your really good players so the warriors and the pestigors they are going to have to go an even longer way around or through a lineman or they're going to end up positioning themselves bang on contact with your beastman uh, with your beast okay with the beast of nurgle and that is kind of where you want their players to be I can't see them committing to tagging that Beast of Nurgle. But the other sneaky great thing here about the anchor defense with having that Beast of Nurgle in the middle is it's really stupid, but it's a 2 plus because you've got the power of friendship. And that 2 plus means that it can then wander three, four squares to tag up basically any two or three players of your opponent's team that you want them to tag. It's fantastic. It is 2+, plus, moves over, strength 5, tentacles, does have mighty blow. It is just going to mark and hold a couple of players. That's It's borderline removal, okay? This is a tempo play. That's one of your players. Then you've got a contingent of 4 strength 4 bad guys, okay? These can individually tank any situation. And what you've got here is, a, is just an absolute team of... They take out this lineman and they follow up. They end up anywhere here. You're going to have a two-die block against them next turn. They end up here. You're going to end up with a two-die block against them next turn. If they end up here, you're going to have a two-die blitz. You are going to be two-die blitzing wherever. And then you've got the Pestigore in the backfield. So one, two, three, four, five, six squares of movement is going to cover almost everything. So you set one square back. It gives you the option then. It gives you extra time to close in on the opponent. Or... You switch it up, you deploy a close anchor, you put the beast on the line, you move everybody up one square and you play closer to your enemy. If you are willing to give that beast a chance at the line, they may clear out both your players and somehow get a good 2 die block against him. But you know what, they're probably not going to want to do that. What they're going to want to do is disengage from your beast and it's going to leave you this team of players in the middle of your own field 
they're going to have to come up towards you. They're going to struggle to get solid blitz. They're going to get one go, and then you get to counter strike with a very heavy but slow force. So that works against a team that is heavy, that's heavy bash, okay? That's got an advantage over you, that's got a better big guy than you, that's got multiple big guys, okay? You're willing to give those rotters up because they cost no money at all, basically, and it keeps the rest of your players safe. If you're up against a mid to light team that is trying to break through, or in fact any team that is speed six or more that is looking to score within two or three turns, the spread defense, absolutely wonderful situation for Nurgle players to be. It's a surprise, I know. So you chuck those three dudes on the line, same as before. You sell them down the river and you just throw their corpse to Nurgle. Fine, happy with that. Then you've got this formation here, and this is a very strong formation. Remember in Blood Bowl, there is no perfect defense. Even if you roll perfect defense, there is no perfect defense. But what you can do is stack it in your odds, in your favor. So remember, this defense is to be used against a team of fast players. And what do fast players generally not have? A huge amount of strength. And what do you have? A huge amount of strength. Each one of these five boxes is protected by a strength four or five player. You've given the line of scrimmage away, okay? That's going to force your opponent to roll dice. Every time they roll a dice, they risk a re-roll. And every time they run out of re-rolls, they risk every single roll. You want them to roll lots of dice, lots of skulls, to give you that kind of bit of equity. Their angle here is support and blitz. One dice, okay? Their angle here is support, support, support one die blitz and that's not even going to open much of a running lane so if they want to break through they're going to have to break through against a strength four armor 75 foul appearance player and we talked about foul appearance right at the very beginning but now it's been faq'd so that you roll it at the beginning of the blitz move so if they've got a blitzer here and they're like yep no worries uh let's chuck a guy here to block to mark that guy let's chuck a guy here for the extra support let's chuck a guy here for the extra support because i'm a strength three blitzer here uh then i'm gonna go up here and down here and blitz this warrior out no problem at all i rolled a one and now i don't get to do anything at all fantastic you've cost them a reroll they're only going to have three sure they can use multiple in one turn but there's eight turns at least every half so <laughs> that's fine with us as nurgle players because they're going to commit and if they do take out your warrior you know what they're not tagging this guy and this guy one two three blitz whoever is there pestigor one two three four five six squares you've got a massive counter-strike team here and that beast is left in the backfield sure it's only got four movement but one two three four goes all the way here so wherever one two three four wherever your opponent is going to go you are going to be able to two die blitz with a warrior or your reserve pestigor and you've got that beast of Nurgle who with a cheeky 2 plus is going to wander exactly where you want him to wander and tag two or three of their players. Again, removal, numerical advantage. Four of your guys are strength four, one of them strength five and your Pestigor is blitzing at strength four as well. You are going to be able to gum up the ground with players that are difficult to block. Then you envelop them. Then you keep taking multiple dice blocks. Cheeky bit of mighty blow. As you level up and your guys get blocked, this is going to get even harder for you. And in a defense like this, something like Stand Firm is a superb situation to have. These guys have strength access and it takes a while to get them there. But not being able to move these guys is impossible. It just makes such a difficult situation. Best case scenario, they've got a big guy that can blitz through. And you know what? Even if they come down here and set up a side cage, you've still got Warrior and Pestigor to really chuck on the pressure. And once you get Warriors on the side of their cage or on the ball carrier, they are in a very bad spot. And that's assuming that they take out the line and break through. Pestigor in reserve. And you've got some very chunky, grotesque linebackers. We do have a third option that plays out pretty well as well. So the strength of Nurgle is that because they've got those strength forward linebackers, you can kind of spare players. And what you can do is use those spare players to bolster your line. So if you are up against a team that is not so fast that it's going to break through, but is not so strong that it's going to be able to dominate you on the line, so mid-range teams here, you can deploy like this. And if we have a look, we've got Warrior, one square in. Uh, on both sides we've got alignment up front 
on both sides there. We've got Pestagoral alignment there as your kind of mid-range safeties. And we've deployed those extra warriors on the edge of the line. So we've got warrior, lineman, beast, lineman, warrior. So your opponent can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this line, but it's going to take five or six players for them to win it. And there's no benefit for them. There's just no benefit. What you're more likely to see, if it's looking like a turn five or six situation is they're not going to commit to that line and all that means is that you've got a strong contingent further into their backfield and that plays to your favor we've still got this warrior on both sides protecting the line of scrimmage uh, protecting the wide zone sorry so they're not coming through there because of the way our tackle zones are here you can see that even if they take that lineman that lineman does nothing all that lineman does is stop them from getting any assists here one assist one ass doesn't work they have to have a strength four player to get two dice on that warrior that's good news they cannot get to these inside backers because of these tackle zones here so what they're going to have to do assuming this is mostly a strength three team is get extra supports to clear out a warrior with foul appearance and just a chunky big boy then come through here and blitz and that's going to take a massive amount of resource and from that point warrior warrior lineman lineman you've got a ton of players who are slow so it is relatively easy if they can break through here to stay protected but at that point you've kind of they've gone and had to apply so much pressure so many players to both of these situations that i'm not sure they're gonna have enough activations to really form a full five player cage in your backfield and at that point if they've built that cage and you can't bring enough pressure on it they've probably earned that touchdown but strong line chevron gives you five guys on the line with two strength four players a one strength five player and a couple of muggles to assist this guy doing stuff when it reactivates you are going to win that line of scrimmage against most teams and you've got two edge scenarios here which are in a pretty good spot now if you are worried about that wide zone you can drop the uh, the warriors in a bit closer or a bit more central but that does mean that your edge zone here is going to be very vulnerable i like playing this one you've got vulnerability here and here there is a vulnerability in every defense though but what this does do is protect both of the wide zones and give you a really strong challenge on that line of scrimmage as well and for if you're not too worried about a breakthrough you can in fact deploy this reserve contingent one square up just to add that closer element to the edges of your line it's a very strong defense very flexible it is slow the whole team's slow but they have to win a lot of zones to get a decent breakthrough here so on the offense nurgle have got all that capacity for damage not a lot of capacity for agility okay starting roster you may have one pestigore dreamingly you have two pestigore so we've got kind of a two for one offense here we're looking at the 7-4 with Nurgle because what you want to do is capitalize on that strength. Capitalize on that strength and win the numbers better. Because if you've got 10 or 11 Nurgle players against 8 or 9 any other team, you've balanced it out. All that's going to do is snowball and 6 turns later you are going to have none of their players on the pitch and one of those touchdowns on your scorecard. So 7-4, you heavily deploy on that line. This is the situation where you can genuinely front up with most teams that are going to be playing defense. And this game here, oh that W, that should be a W there, is going to be about farming blocks okay you've got a couple of choices depending on where the ball goes if the ball goes here and you want to protect you can farm the blocks in that direction otherwise if the ball lands anywhere here you should be able to move multiple players to screen to protect and then you can pass these guys along you should be able to delete those three players with this amount of offensive stress here and if your blocks go really well and you pound them down in the first couple then you've got extra players to come down here and start forming an ad hoc cage in the backfield when it comes to Nurgle, you don't necessarily have the movement to cage up straight away. So what you have to do is protect the ball, take those free blocks, then deploy an open cage. Okay, you want to go into screen motion first, let them try and blitz through, then you basic, basically, you set up a screen, they blitz through it, and tag the ball carrier. At that point, all they've done is given you one player inside a gaggle of your own. You build a cage around that player and uh, on his bones. So the 7-4 offense protects you in that regard. If you've got one Pestigore, 
you deploy them on one side they're going to kick the other side to be aware if you've got two pestigors then actually deploy them in this i formation instead go seven two one one in that point because one two three four five six that gives you the potential to put a dude above and below any ball situation and because of the four squares of movement that each of these guys has as well you will be able to get two pestigors and one of your rotters onto a ball situation it should be one protect pest one protect lineman one pestacle to pick up the ball and just contain or all three to just chuck tackle zones on there while you just destroy and delete your opponent's line of scrimmage a slight variant here is if you don't want to deploy too heavily on the line you can have your uh, warriors a little bit wider now this will give you better protection against the blitz but leaves you really open for a wide kick you're going to cost it's going to cost you multiple turns if the ball ends up here or here you are going to lose a turn collecting and protecting if that's okay because it's the beginning of the half then the 5411 is going to give you a couple of advantages so you deploy warrior warrior on each side with two rotters next door to this beast those rotters are there to help that beast activate and just take away and provide assists the warriors on the edge should be able to two die block anybody that's been put here and if you've got a cheeky opportunity then dropping one of these warriors up a little bit onto that line of scrimmage and getting an extra block is a fantastic way to do it the key here is that you're using these tackle zones to protect you from a cheeky blitz okay so if you're playing against a team that is quite agile you're playing elves skaven then actually this formation is going to give you a it's going to give you some absolutely brilliant blocks on the line it's going to protect you from a cheeky blitz but it also means that you've got a strength four player on both sides here so whichever way the ball goes who can quite frankly just go for a probably solo blitz but does have a rotter there with that one square of movement extra is going to be able to get a two die blitz on anything so you'll be able to dominate this line push it this way ball lands here go for the blitz whatever you want to do you'll have one blitz contingent one support contingent these guys get the ball you're in a really solid position now nurgle are going to take two turns to collect that ball most of the time all right if you've got pestigors you can go for a stretch play but edge three plus is as good as it gets and i think past four plus is as good as it gets as well so you're not pulling off any passing shenanigans and really who are you giving the ball to if you're coming to score you kind of want to do it with your warriors now it used to be a cheeky rotter three plus catch was a really good stretch play that's gone now they're edge four plus you want to get those warriors to bash their way to a touchdown because that's a great way to get spp you only need six for them to start becoming blockers once they get blocked they start farming casualty spp on their own or if you're playing the long game go mighty blow first because it will technically get you quicker and um, get you spp quicker it is a technicality block wins you more games mighty blow gets you more spp five four eleven though two guys in the backfield are going to be able to go and select that ball and you've got a very solid screen there to defend with the rest of your nurgle team but remember with nurgle you want to apply your pressure consolidate and realistically your goal now is to let them smash against you like the sea against cliffs because your team is not going anywhere and eventually their armor is going to wear out anyway guys i'm going to wrap up nurgle please let me know what you think about the formations please let me know about what you think about nurgle in blood bowl 2020 they got downgraded ever so slightly with that edge bust but everything got a bit cheaper so you can afford a bit more now so actually over time i think we're going to end up with nurgle 13 1400 tv being absolute powerhouses they're going to overcome that that uh, that edge two pestigors one with sure hands going to be really really solid anyway i'm going to disappear and we'll be back soon with more blood bowl content happy blocking thanks very much for watching we really appreciate your support if you want to support the show even further please like and subscribe it really helps us out or come and join us in our patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions see you later